Welcome everyone on our presentation, how to set up test uh, infrastructure. So first of all, I would like to introduce uh, myself. So my name is uh, Shimon Richard and I am an engineering manager of Zephyr validation team in Poland. I work for uh, Intel for eight years and I have overall 15 years of experience in validation. With me is Mateusz Juncker. He previously worked as a C++ developer. Now he is an OS development engineer in Zephyr and he works for Intel for one and a half year. To give you some insight, I'll tell a few words how we get involved into Zephyr. So in November 2022, we were given an opportunity to start this new adventure in open source project. We joined a very experienced Zephyr team located in US uh, and Canada. For most of us in Poland, experienced mostly in Windows storage driver development and validation. It was really challenging, but on the other hand, very, very exciting. Working in open source project is so different. Well, collaboration with external vendors and people all over the world on delivering this great product. And at the same time, working with our internal Intel clients to fulfill their requirements, it's complicated but fun. So let's move to the agenda. So first of all, I will tell a few words uh, why we decided to build our new test infrastructure. Then I'll tell a few words about the test scope. And then I will pass to Mateusz to describe our new GitHub test infrastructure and the last point of course will be questions and answers to start uh, let's say a few words about the old environment so our old testing environment was built using jenkins and i'm not uh, gonna say that jenkins is bad or that our old approach was completely wrong we still maintain it while in parallel we work on the new uh, infrastructure. Well, working with the old environment, we identified few problems we wanted to sort out when going towards. So one of the problems to solve that we previously had uh, was that there is a dedicated validation hardware environment, but most of the time the platforms are in idle, so it's really inefficient and it consumes lab space, which is very, very costly. So let's look at the transition goals we have here on the slide. So first of all, we wanted a unified and cross geo, this is really important, cross geo hardware pool to provide access to those through GitHub Actions. This hardware pool uh, must be used both for pull requests and also to run our scheduled uh, validation, like for daily, weekly, and other scheduled type validations. The third thing is that we really wanted to have a direct access for our developers and validation engineers uh, to do, for example, development work or maybe triage some bugs. So as we can see on the graph, the target, the goal is to have one, one hardware pool, cross geo hardware pool, working for CI PRs, for schedule validations and for developers. The last bullet is that we also wanted to have an automated and unified way of reporting. 
So let's move to the next slide. I will say also a few words about the test scope because this is also the area we wanted to improve a little bit. So we started to think how to test more efficiently and how to use our hardware in a more smart way and not to cause wear if it's not necessary. So let's take a look at, uh, at the problems we identified here. So first thing is that all the tests currently are treated the same and selected mainly by built-in filtering. The second problem is that the test coverage is controlled by metadata in Zephyr project, primarily designed for optimized CI execution times. And third thing is that all classes of tests are ex executed on hardware. So this includes also tests that should be, that are hardware agnostic actually. It, and the example is like, uh, high level test or library code. And solution for this is, well, we wanted to have an optimized test scope. What it means actually? Well, execute tests on hardware for those scenarios that cannot be covered through simulators and emulators. Now, I'll tell a few words about the technologies we use to set up this new environment. So first one is GitHub Actions and I'll skip it for now because Mateusz will tell uh, more uh, in the upcoming slides about it. We use virtual machines, so vCenter and ESXe hypervisors. And why we use ESX? Well, it keeps the environment consistent. Uh, the machines are, you know, easy to recover and the environment is easy to scale. We use also Docker for standardization, unification. We use Ansible for automatic deployment of, uh, of DATS and every machine which is necessary in the environment. We use LabGrid as a coordinator, but uh, again, Mateusz will probably elaborate a little bit more, more about it in the upcoming slides. And last but not least, Elasticsearch for storing and reporting. Now I will pass to Mateusz. Hello everyone, as, as Simon said, uh, I will start from saying a few words about GitHub Actions. Um, error hours, speed, efficiency and automation are paramount. GitHub Actions has emerged as a game-changing platform that revolutionizes the way that we build, test and deploy our software. The beauty of GitHub Actions lies in the versatility and extensibility. It allows developers to leverage pre-built actions or create custom actions to automate virtually any task in their software development lifecycle. Furthermore, GitHub Actions foster collaboration and enhance team productivity. Its seamless integration with GitHub repositories enable developers to trigger action based on pull requests, issues, or other repository events, uh, smooth code review, continuous integration, and effective project management. So with the power of automation at their fingertips, developer can focus more on building innovative solution and less on mundane repetitive tasks. I would like to share with you our common goal and strategy. We're aiming to achieve a blueprint that will enable us to realize our objectives through the implementation of specific phases. In the following steps, I will present the current progress and the next action we, want, we plan to undertake to move forward. 
So let's move to phase one that we already finished. We start with something simple to get familiar with uh, environment, to address some important points regarding the queuing system and the roles of runner and actors in our platforms. These points shed light on how our platform operates and ensure fairness and efficiency in executing tasks. The queuing system plays a, plays a crucial role in managing the execution, execution of tasks within our platform. It ensures that each task is proceed in order and semantic manner. The queuing system is defined by the runner. That's it, it, that's, it, this is important here because it's a main uh, role of runner. It is important also to note that all platforms within our system are reserved exclusively by only one runner. They have the necessary resources and capabilities to perform the designed actions effic efficiently and reliability. At this phase, actor or other entities within our system do not have direct access to the platform. They do not perform task themselves, but rather rely on the runner to carry out the necessary actions. This clear distinction ensures that the execution environment remains controlled. There is also no purity between scheduling tasks and the execution of pull requests. Both scheduled tasks and pull requests are treated equally and are placed on the same level within the queuing system. This ensures fairness and avoid any bias in our execution order. Let's go to the phase two. So the next phase of improvement that we have undertaken to enhance the queuing system and optimize the other overall workflow. And those uh, advent advancements not only allow GitHub to effectively manage incoming request, uh, request, but also provide a more streamlined experience for our user. In this phase, we have made a significant improvement to our queue manager. Right now, GitHub possesses the capability to actively manage incoming requests, ensuring that tasks are assigned and executed in time manner. This queue manager acts as a central hub coordinating the allocation of resources and optimizing the overall workflow. As a part of our efforts to improve performance, we have expanded the numbers of runners available in our system. Those runners are now specifically assigned to different platform types, allowing for a more targeted and efficient execution of tasks. Where pull request is submitted, GitHub actively looks for available and free runner to handle the request. This dynamic assignment process ensures that pull requests are processed promptly and efficiently. By actively seeking free, free runners, we minimize any potential delays and maximize the speed of execution for pull request. And just as before, and both scheduled task and pull requests remain on the same level within, within our queuing system. To maintain control and avoid problems, there is also no access uh, from actors to, the, to the, our DATs, like it was in phase one. Those achievements mark a significant step forward in improving the efficiency, reliability, and user experience within our platform. The improved queue manager, increased number of runners, fair treatment of scheduled based task and pull request, dynamic runner assignment for pull request and restricted access for actor, collectively contribute to a more optimized and effective workflow. I can say right now uh, our progress uh, is uh, on the phase two, we already finished phase two and we are working to uh, go and uh, finish phase three. So let's move to phase three. We say that it will be future goals because we are working on that. So the future goals in our queuing system are aimed at improving overall 
management and efficiency of the platform, providing a more tailored experience for both pull, re pull requests and actors. So in this phase, we would like to introduce a coordinator to manage the queuing system. As Shimot said, it, uh, right now we select LabGrid, so the coordinator acts as a central authority overseeing the assignment and execution of tasks within the platform. This ensures a well-coordinated and optimized workflow as coordinator dynamically allocates resources based on demand and availability. Uh, so next improvement will be generic runners uh, for platforms. To cater the diverse needs of platform, uh, different platform, our runners have been designed to be the generic. These runners possess the flexibility and adaptability to handle various platform-specific tasks. By utilizing generic runners, we ensure compatibility and consistent, consist, consistency across different platforms streamline the execution process. Runner resources will be chosen based on factors such as uh, compatibility, workload and availability, ensuring that pull requests or other events receive the necessary attention and resources that they are required. Uh, in addition to managing the queue system, the coordinate, coordinator also grants access to actor within the platform. This means that actor are provided with the necessary permission and resources to carry out their assignment task. This controlled access ensures that actors can perform their, their duties efficiently while, while maintaining the integrity and security of the uh, platform. So that uh, that's all on uh, phase three, and let's move the last uh, phase, which is phase. Uh, we can say it's uh, phase four. Four, it's a general schema. So the one significant improvement in uh, the last phase is the separation of the reporter runner. This dedicated runner is specifically designed to handle reporting tasks efficiently. By isolating reporting functionalities, we ensure to ensure accurate and reliable feedback on status of workflow, work, workflow and task. Uh, to enhance data management and accessibility, we have implemented two distinct databases. The internal database for storing and organizing critical information within our platform. Uh, additionally, we are introducing a self-hosted dashboard that empowers users to take control of data and workflow management. With this self-hosted dashboard, user, user can customize and tailor their workspace to meet their specific needs, creating a personalized data management environment. And the second uh, one, and the public board. So in our commitment to fostering collaboration and knowledge sharing, we are introducing the concept of public board. User will uh, have the ability to share their board's test result to the community, enabling others to gain insight into their project, workflows and progress. This feature encourages collaboration, innovation and exchange of ideas among developers, fueling the growth of vibrant and supportive community. In other words, community members can now access and utilize shared resources, enabling them to, to perform tests on real hardware. This opened an uh, opportunity for more comprehensive and accurate testing, leading to higher quality software development outcomes. In conclusion, the separation of report runner, the implementation of two base, uh, base databases, the provisioning of uh, shared infrastructure for real hardware testing uh, contribute to more collaborative, efficient and innovative testing infrastructure. We are excited to witness positive impact and uh, those advantages we will have the development community fostering collaboration, enabling data-driven decisions, decisions and accelerating software development. I believe that our determination, collaboration and dedication will enable us to successfully accomplish our objectives.
Achieving success requires systematic and organized effort, but I'm confident that we are on the right track. Thank you for your attention and let's go maybe to some questions. Thank you, everyone. And yeah, we're waiting for your questions. Thanks.